Batman and the Joker's rivalry is legendary in the world of comics and in the world of heroes in general, and one of the key facets of their relationship is that Batman refuses to kill the Joker. No matter what the Joker does and how depraved his antics become, Batman still won't kill him. So it may surprise some of you to know that Batman has actually killed the joke before on several different occasions across several different universes, including the main DC universe, and this video is going to go over them all. End game. Now this is one of the main DC universe murders, and in this story the Joker tries to convince Batman that he is an immortal who is called the Pale Man who has lived in Gotham for centuries. Though Batman eventually sees through this and discovers that the Joker is really using a compound called Dionysium to give himself insanely good healing powers to even make it look like he could potentially be an immortal. And these healing powers are so strong that he's actually able to survive a bullet through the heart. But Batman makes a chemical agent to counteract this. And so the Joker can be hurt once more. And during the course of the Batman vs. Joker fight, the Joker is grievously wounded, and as he crawls toward a pit of Dionysium to use it to heal himself, Batman stops him and the two of them are crushed to death by a cave-in. Although of course both of them are later resurrected, seemingly by being exposed to the Dionysian pit as the cave-in must have disrupted it and spread it about, bringing them both back to life. But still, the two of them did disappear for comics for quite a while after their apparent deaths. Vampire Batman now this is from the Elseworld story that's set in the Red Rain universe. And in this universe Batman has become a vampire, but he has managed to resist drinking human blood. And in the rules of this universe that stops him from becoming a full-on vampire, and he is immune to holy water and the holy cross. So basically he's a vampire, but without the normal vampire weaknesses. But the Joker builds a cult of vampire criminals and spreads such terror throughout Gotham City that he actually causes Batman to snap and then he snaps the Joker's neck killing him. And as he sees the Joker bleed, he is unable to resist. And so he drinks his blood now, becoming an unholy vampire that feeds on humans. And because of this, he actually has Alfred and Commissioner Gordon stake him so that he can't hurt anyone ever again. So in a way, the Joker actually got the last laugh here, as he was able to kill Batman from beyond the grave, although he does later get resurrected in a later story. And I do also think this story would have been much better if the joke would have been transformed into a vampire as well, or at the very least a werewolf, because vampires and werewolves have always been at war with each other and a lot of stories. Justice League of America, The Nail now this is the story of an alternate timeline where a nail finds itself in one of the tires of the car of Superman's parents and as such Superman parents never drove into Smallville and never came across Superman and didn't raise him. And this leads to a lot of changes in this university's future such as the world hating superheroes as there is no Superman there to be the symbol of hope. But the part of this story that matters for this video is that the Joker is able to get hold of some super advanced technology from Krypton and he has two power gauntlets that blast electricity and create force fields and he uses them to take over Arkham Asylum, killing quite a lot of the villains in the process. And he does this of course to luring Batman. And when Batman arrives, he is easily able to defeat him with these gauntlets, and then he's able to catch both Robin and Batgirl. And then the joke executes them right in front of Batman, which causes something inside of Batman to break and he loses control completely. And so when he gets free of the force field, he disarms Joker and then snaps the Joker's neck and kills him on live television. Unfortunately, Batman is unable to live with himself after this, as the guilt of taking a life is driving it mad. And so he hands himself over to the police. Although when it goes to court, they declare it an act of war. After all, he did kill the Joker. Not a lot of people really care about that guy, and so they let Batman go free. And though he never forgives himself, he does continue on as Batman, the Batman who laughs. Now this is one of the most popular alternate Batman, and his origin directly comes from Batman's greatest fear and desire, which is of course killing the Joker. Now in this universe, this Batman is pretty much the same as the one we're used to in the main DC continuity, as is everyone else in the rest of this universe. But the Joker goes on a killing rampage worse than anything he's done before, setting bombs all over Gotham in an attempt to destroy the city. And he's even killed Commissioner Gordon. And when he shoots and kills a couple coming home from the theater with their child, which is of course mirroring Bruce Wayne's origin story, Batman finally has enough, and he's pushed so far that he snaps the Joker's neck, killing him. 
and in doing so he releases a Joker toxin that was sealed inside the Joker's body and could only be released upon the Joker's death. And because Batman was in such close proximity when he killed him, he is exposed to the gas and it alters his mind, turning him more like the Joker. Except that he's the Joker with all of Batman's training, skill, tactics, and resources, which explains why he's such a fan favorite. The Killing Joke Now this one's actually a bit of a gray area, although we don't technically see Batman kill the Joker. It is heavily implied that he does. Basically, at the end of the story, the two are laughing and sharing a joke, and then the Batman snaps his neck and kills him. Whenever he does kill the Joker, he does like snapping the neck and that's why the laughter so abruptly stops in this moment. Batman basically doesn't feel like laughing after the joke is dead, and obviously the Joker can't laugh once he's dead. Now whether you want to count this as a death is up to you, because the Joker certainly didn't stay dead in the main DC universe and they never actually showed it on panel, but it has been revealed since this was written that Alan Moore did intend for him to be killed, which is why the story is called The Killing Joke. Batman Damned. Now this is a bit of a confusing story. It basically starts out with Constantine coming to Gotham as Batman goes hurtling off a bridge while wounded, and it's a fault that should have been fatal, but Batman somehow survives. Or rather, he doesn't survive. Like I said, it gets a bit confusing, but it seems that the Joker was attacking Batman, and Batman became fatally wounded, and he was scared that if he died, then Gotham will be left alone with the Joker, and he couldn't allow that to happen. So Batman decides to tackle the Joker, and they both go off the bridge. Both of them will then die, and there won't be any problem. But as I said, Batman didn't die at the beginning of the story, and it's kind of revealed that we're in some sort of afterlife where Batman can decide whether the Joker lives or dies, and whether he lives or dies. And so he decides for the Joker to live, because he doesn't want to take a life and both of them come back to life. At least that's what I think happens. Like I said, this comic's very confusing and I didn't really follow the ending. I mean, personally, I thought the story wasn't actually that bad until the ending, because that gets all very confusing and it basically means that everything that happened in the comic was essentially pointless. But it does still count as a time that Batman killed the Joker, even though you don't really see the murder itself. And he does bring him back to life, but still, he does kill him. Injustice. Now as we all know, the Injustice universe really begins when Superman kills the Joker and then basically becomes a totalitarian dictator. But in the comics of the Injustice universe, we see a glimpse of a different type of timeline. Superman is put into a magical sleep and he sees a world where his wife and child didn't die and so he didn't kill the Joker. Instead, the wife and child are alive and Batman kills the Joker in order to stop the Joker from trying to kill Superman's family again, which he said he was going to do, and once again, he does snap the Joker's neck. This seems to be pretty much how the Joker always dies at Batman's hand, and after this, Batman hands himself in and goes to prison for the murder. And Superman stays a hero with his wife and daughter. In fact, his daughter actually grows up to be quite the hero herself. And basically time goes on. Bruce Wayne eventually gets out of prison and marries Wonder Woman. And the whole universe is pretty much a utopia, which makes it even more tragic when Superman is awoken from the magical sleep to learn that it was all a lie. But it is actually quite an interesting story, and like pretty much all of the Injustice comics, I do recommend reading them because they're very well written. The very first Batman issue. Now, I have actually spoken to a lot of people who believe that Batman killed the Joker in his first appearance, and to be fair, that was the original plan the writers wanted to do, but it's actually not true. In the comic book Batman number one, the Joker goes to stab Batman, Batman steps aside, and then this causes the Joker to somehow end up stabbing himself and Batman and Robin believe that he is dead. But then when the Joker is examined in the ambulance, it's revealed that he's still alive and going to be fine. And this is apparently because the comic book editor thought that the Joker was worth keeping around, as he thought the character had potential, and I think we can all agree that he was right. And one funny thing that needs to be mentioned about this is that the writer originally wanted to kill off the Joker because he didn't like repeat villains and he wanted him to be a one-off. Which I think is kind of hilarious because the Joker is the ultimate repeat villain and Batman's villains coming back is kind of big part of the story. I mean Batman is constantly putting them in Arkham and they escape. So repeat villains are kind of what is all about and that is every time that Batman has killed the Joker. Are there any other times that you think I've missed? If so, please let us all know in the comments because I would like this video to be complete. And also let us know what your favorite time Batman kills the Joker is. 
I mean, personally, I think the best story was probably the Injustice one, although the Batman Who Laughs is also a pretty good story. So it's between the two of those for me. But the next person Batman is gonna kill is me. If you don't subscribe and like, 